Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie. In today's process video, I'm going to create the layout number one from the Daisy Daisy paper collection. Now, I have a little confession for you here. I was not in love with all of this green. That's a lot of green for me. So I'm going to try to embrace the green and make this paper work for my photos. Another thing that I'm doing this year is that I'm going back into my incomplete albums and I am completing them. So this is part of my daughter's baby album. And um, I found these pictures of her cute little face. So I was looking for photos that had a little bit of pink and um, her eyes are absolutely beautiful. They are green. So I thought, okay, let's embrace the green. Now this paper collection lends itself really, really well to black and white photos, but I just couldn't scrapbook these photos in black and white. So the first thing that I did is, of course, I sorted my photos and then I double matted them in white and then in the darkest shade of green, which is the evergreen. And then I thought, okay, before I get ahead of myself, let's take a look at the paper collection and let's take a look at the layout. Now there's also a pop of black in this collection and sweet moments is the sticker that i'm going to use for my title so we are going to do this layout together right here but i'm going to change it up just a little bit add in a little bit lighter tones because as i said was not a fan of all of that green so here are the papers they've all been fanned out for you these are the darker shades that's what i call them and these are the lighter tones right here i really like this light tone that you see in this green and it reminded me of an older color julep so that might make an appearance the other thing that sold me on this kit is absolutely this gorgeous, gorgeous stamp set. I really, really love it. And it's got its own thin cuts. Now you can probably see here that I've had a little play with some of these. And I'm going to show you how to create three-dimensional daisies with this die let me clear off my desk right here and i'm going to get all of these papers cut as per project number one i'm going to lighten up some of these shades because the good thing is that there are two sides to each of these papers and i think i'm going to concentrate on these ones right here definitely not going to use the stripes so i might bring back the light pink this one here is a little busy for me so you can see right here by switching it up ever so slightly i might keep this punch of green because i do like it but you can see by flipping these papers around the pattern is absolutely gorgeous now these little flowers are beautiful but again I need to embrace the green and see where it takes me. So let me clear this up and we'll get started. Okay, so this is where I am in the process and this is what it's gonna look like with just simply flipping over a few of those patterns. I did concentrate on the light pink and uh, I really, really did like this pattern right here. I think that it's absolutely pretty. But you can see here that by just flipping those patterns over, if I bring back the original, it instantly makes it a little softer. And because these are for baby photos, I kind of wanted to do that. Now, I did, you know, try and embrace the green and I did do the evergreen mats here. Another tip that I want to give you is that in the guide here they do show a really thin black border around all of the photos and i think by making it just a little bit bigger you have a little bit more separation between the pattern and the photo and it allows your eye to rest a little as you are enjoying the layout so these ones were originally matte i've just corrected them or changed them um, and the evergreen because I was trying to embrace the green but it was kind of 
I wasn't sitting well. And then I knew that I wanted to bring in some of the black. So I went ahead and I used the black mat. I made it a little bit bigger than what is um, suggested in the assembly guide. And I roughed up the edges and I ran that into the ballerina ink. So let me show you quickly how that works. And let me show you how also by changing up this green, how her green eyes are actually going to pop even more. So this has been tacked down with double-sided tape. So I can remove the backing. I just have to pull very, very gently. I do double mat my photos. So you've got a small little mat here in white. So I'm gonna discard this one. And then I'm gonna bring in the black. So the black, what I did is I used my distressing tool. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can definitely use your scissors. Let me grab my scissors. And you can distress that as well, but don't use the inside of your scissors. I've seen people do that, and it's just going to dull your blade. Unless you have a dedicated pair of scissors to do that, you can actually do it just with the edge of your scissors. See, it works perfectly fine and uh, that way you are not damaging them. Since I have this little tool, I'm going to go ahead very quickly here, and I'm going to show you how, by adding just a few little touches and a few little, you know, details to this layout, you can totally make it your own, and you can totally embrace the green. <laughs> and that was my, my goal here today, was to embrace the green. When your edges are all distressed, and this works best with black cardstock that has a white core, of course, then bring in ballerina or whichever color you want to highlight. And I'm just going to rub it all along the edges here just to give that white core a nice pink kind of finish to it. And I really, really like the way it complements the page. It complements the photos. And um, let me just show you very quickly. I'm just going to go ahead and do these edges. And then when I bring in my photo, see how now the focus is really on the green eyes and not so much the green border. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay this down. I'm trying to do this standing up, which is probably not a good idea, but I'm going to add this right here somewhere. Now, if you look at the original layout, it calls for three, and this one here is actually a four by six. I didn't have a four by six in my photo collection, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use three four by four, and I'm gonna change it up a little bit and make it work. So let's go to the next phase, which is now that I've introduced the black onto this page, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edge distress all of these pieces here using black. And uh, we're going to continue on with this assembly because I can't wait to show you how I'm going to bring in these gorgeous 3D flowers on this page. I've got a few here and we'll make these together. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna ink distress all of these and we will continue with this assembly. I just wanted to show you uh, right here before I start making the flowers, and yes, I will get to them. So in the layout, the assembly guide tells you to use this zip strip right here, which is green and very, very bright green. A little too bright for me. I did mention that there was a lighter shade of green in here, and um, I really wanted to pick up on that. And I was lucky enough to still have some julep glitter paper. Now look at that, how instantly it brightens that page. It's still green, but it really brings a light touch to the page and this layout. Okay, so let's go ahead and have fun with making dimensional daisies. So I've gone ahead and I've used the die and uh, I've cut out a whole bunch, but I'm gonna show you how to make this one here. And then I'm gonna show you how to make a variation with this color. And then I'm gonna bring in an element of surprise. 
So for the first one, so let's concentrate on this one right here. You're going to need two of the base pieces and one of the inside piece. Now, the way that this flower was designed, this is kind of like a shadow piece that lays flat on it. And uh, it looks really good. I just thought I would kick it up a notch and give it a 3D look. Now for the 3D look, I'm going to start with Ballerina ink. And I am just going to add some color inside the first one. The back one doesn't need anything. So we're just going to go ahead, use Ballerina ink, and I'm going to use my dauber here and because I'm going in the center I'm gonna have a mark but that's okay because I've got another piece right on top um, you can use the blender brushes but I just I don't know I just grabbed my tool here and it was working fine so I just kept going with it so I'm adding very quickly here a little bit of ballerina ink right in the center of this flower just like so and we're gonna layer this up. So when I bring this right in front of the white, you can see that there's quite a bit of pink here. So I am going to add a little bit more. And the thing with ink is that it dries back. So it looks a little bit dark right now, but it's definitely going to dry back. So I'm going to add some to this piece right here. And uh, I think I'm going to use Flamingo ink. So I am just going to get another, I'm just going to change my tool here. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use the Flamingo ink. And I'm lightly adding it to the edges. And you'll see that this is a little bit tricky because this was not probably not the way it was meant to be used but you know me and flowers I like to give them a little bit of a punch this one here I call it the little hook it's actually if you go in whichever direction you are going to run into problems so just go nice and light when you are adding your ink and uh, it just gives it that extra little dimension that I'm looking for. So we have flamingo cardstock on the dark side and then just two pieces of white. The center here is done in the ballerina on the light side. So I'm going to move this to the side and I'm going to start shaping them. Now to shape them I use a bone folder and gently pull back on each of the petals very gently these are you know kind of long and skinny and you don't want to rip them so I'm gonna do that to both so you can see that they're curling back so this is oh, it's been well loved and well used as you can see this is just a fun foam mat that you can find at Michaels and uh, I've just cut it down so that it's more manageable and you're gonna need this because you need a something with a little bit of give. You can also use the back side of your Versamat right here. So this is my Versamat and this is the back side. But for whatever reason, I like to use a smaller surface. You can do whatever you would like. So I'm using here, like I don't use fancy tools. Uh, I'm going to use here just a gel, jelly roll pen, something that has a round edge. And I am just going to roll that out. So you've got one and two. Now you can definitely use those rolls, those stylus with the balls. You can, but um, I and I have used them. It's just that I find that you don't need a whole bunch of fancy tools to make flowers. You can use what you have and they will look really pretty just by giving them a little bit of dimension. I'm going to rotate this in place to make it look full and I'm going to adhere that down. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue in the center and you can see that I've glued on this and that's why I don't mind getting these little mats because they're inexpensive and I can change them out, you know, maybe once a year depending on how many flowers I make that year. 
So this is pretty much it. And you could stop right here. You could stop right here and put that in the center. It gives it dimension and it looks really pretty. I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna work with this one here. And this one here, again, you need to be very, very gentle as you are pulling these down because it's not the way it was meant to be used. But I just wanted to give this flower a little bit more life. So this one here is the one that's going to be a little problematic. I call it the hook. And you just go very gently, kind of curl it down. And now that they're all curled down, I'm going to come in with my pen. I'm going to push that down in the center. And do you see how it just instantly gives it this really cool dimension? So let's bring this back. And I am going to add this right on top. I'm going to add this right on top. I'm going to press down in the center just like so. I'm going to set this aside. For the center, you could just pop that right in there, but I feel that it kind of loses itself a tiny little bit. So I'm going to just go around the edges, just very, very lightly, and it's going to create a little bit of dimension. It's just going to round it out. So I'm just going to use a foam dot right here on the center. And you're probably thinking, this is sticky now. So to address the stickiness of the foam dot, I'm sure you have some glitter in your craft room. I am just going to add a little bit of glitter to the front part of this piece. This is just loose glitter. And what happens here is that the glitter sticks to the glue that's on the glue dot. It gives your flower dimension. It gives it that really pretty dainty look. And uh, I'm pretty sure you probably all have some in your room. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop this right on top. And we're gonna move on to the next color combination. Again, you're gonna need one, two, and then we're going to use a white center and we are going to use a ballerina center for this one here. So very much like the other one, I'm going to take my ballerina ink. So I'm gonna come in and very lightly, like I'm barely touching the cardstock here because if you push down on your cardstock, you are definitely going to damage the petal and we don't wanna do that. So I'm kind of doing this kind of like twisting motion if you want. I'm not even rubbing it on because I'm just trying to kind of give it that blush look on the end. I'm just going ahead back and forth and barely, barely touching it. So that is one. So this is it for this flower here. I am not adding any color to the center. And I'm going to repeat that same thing where I'm going to pull back on them. And you can see that I'm holding the base. I am not pulling tight. This is in real time, so you get an appreciation for how it's done. So I'm holding the base of the petal and I'm pulling back. Now, isn't that cute? Super pretty. It just gives it a little bit of dimension, not too much, not too much work as far as a dimensional flower. So let me bring you the element of surprise, which is because I had cut so many of these pieces, I'm just gonna wipe down my mat here, my piece of mat, I should say. I'm just getting rid of the ink just in case. Now, these center pieces really spoke to me. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but they just had this kind of funky little look to them. So this is flamingo on the dark side. This is ballerina. And this is flamingo on the light side. 
The first thing you'll need to do to create this flower is, remember I told you about this little hook part? Now, just snip that out. It'll just make the process go a lot smoother. And it's really not going to show because we are going to layer these up. Before shaping the flowers, I like to ink them. So these ones here are all going to be inked with Flamingo ink. See that I started from the darkest to the lightest. And I am going very, very, very lightly. And I'm going in the outwards direction. Now, if I would have kept that little hook, I would not have been able to do this. So we can do the shaping very much like the other ones. Okay, so these have all been curled down. So now we just need to make them come back up and that's by adding pressure to the inside and just kind of rolling the inside piece. I'm just going into circular motion. I am not holding on to the piece because you can see that it's moving and if you hold on to the piece, it is going to rip. So we're just gonna let it do its thing. We're gonna curl it back up. And we are gonna put this together and you're gonna see that it creates a really cute little flower. It's unexpected, but it is super cute and adorable. So we're going to do this very much the same way we did the other ones. So starting with the dark, and then we're gonna work our way to the light. So I don't know if you saw that, but I'm always looking for that, that gap in the flower. And that's how I add the next piece. So this one I feel could go here. There is no right or wrong way of doing this. But um, it does look really, really adorable. So let's put a little center in here and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the darkest one of the flamingo. So let's take a look at this little flower. Isn't she cute? I thought it was just so adorable and uh, it just gives a different size to work with. These flowers here are all the same size. So by doing this, you get a different look and uh, I really like the way that it turned out. So. Let's go back to the layout and I'm going to use these flowers on my layout. Before jumping into the layout, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp a few of these leaves right here from the stamp set. Um, I feel that these look a little bit bare and uh, it's going to give me an opportunity to bring back a little bit of green because we are embracing the green. And I'm just going to stamp a few and I'm going to let them dry completely. So this is probably the time in the assembly where you're going to take a little break, maybe have lunch and come back because we are going to add a little bit of color to them. You can see here that I've gone ahead and I've stamped a whole bunch of leaves because my intention is that I'm going to color them in, add a little bit of green. And I kind of do that when I'm creating. I do a whole bunch. You see here, I've got a whole bunch of flowers. I've got a whole bunch of leaves. And then I can pick out the prettiest ones for my layout. And I always keep the rest and I add them to the carrying sheet. That way I can use them for another project. So I'm going to let these dry completely before adding ink to them because this is just black ink and I don't want it to smudge, but as long as you let it dry completely, you will be good to go. I am following along with my instructions here that I've received, and I definitely want to use this title right here. So let's pull this one out. And I'm gonna stick that here to the side. This is Julep Ink. It's a, a prototype that I had back in the day. But I felt that this green was really nice. So let me just kind of see here with my blender brush, see how that's gonna look. And maybe I'm gonna bring in my dauber. 
The other reason why I like to have them all done here on a large piece is that you can see that I can do that, that messy dot, <laughs> the first dot, which we all hate, off the page. And then when I cut this, it's not even going to show because the stems are going to be tucked away underneath. But I can kind of start and have that, that dark kind of pounce right at the bottom. And I'm going to cut that out because the plan here is to fussy cut all of these. So as I'm adding ink to these, and of course it doesn't look really pretty at this point, but the other reason why I did it this way was because there's no way I could have added ink and have these tiny little pieces. They would have just ripped. You have a surface that you can go back and forth with the ink and you can add a little bit more intensity right in the center, knowing that you're gonna be cutting most of this out. So you don't feel that you have to be super careful when you are adding the ink right here. So I'm just gonna kind of add a second coat to these leaves right at the base so that they're a little bit darker from the center and then they go lighter. And uh, again, because I'm doing this on a large piece, I just, I'm just doing this randomly. I'm not paying too much attention to it. And that's, you know, it's fun sometimes just to kind of go ahead and just not worry about ripping your pieces. So I am pretty happy with that. And let me bring back the layout. I'm going to bring back this layout and see how this green, so this is julep, and again it's going to dry back and it's going to look a little bit like this light shade that is underneath. These are the leaves, these are the stickers, and uh, you can see that these ones here are going to be just a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and we are going to come back to the fun part, which is doing all of the embellishments. All right, so before I adhere everything down, I just wanted to show you how pretty this looks with the dimensional flowers. And uh, I've gone ahead and uh, I did cut this, as I mentioned, it is out of julep glitter paper. So if you have any glitter paper that you would like to try on this layout, I think that it looks fantastic. Now I'm not going to add too many flowers because the pattern in the background is so busy, uh, but I think these two clusters here are just enough. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere those. I really like these stickers and just by adding that stamp leaf in the back, it really does give them a brand new look and I find that they pop a little bit more off the pattern. And then here, I really like this flower, it's really unexpected. And uh, in the handout, when you're following along, depending on which bundle you purchase, they also have these little black chips that are paperboard. I didn't get them this time around, but I did have some acrylic black flowers. So I went through my stash and I'm adding them here and there. So I'm adding a little cluster here, one up here and two down there, just to kind of get your eye to go through the entire layout. I did have to change the orientation of my journaling because I had a little bit more than I wanted to say. These are just her milestone. And I did stamp in ballerina ink, those little flowers, very, very faint because I don't want to distract from everything else that's going on. So I'm really liking how this turned out. These are gonna go directly on the page. This one here was done with pop dots, but everything else is pretty much standard assembly. So I'm gonna skip through that and I will come back for the complete reveal. Here are the completed pages for project number one. So if we go back and we look at project number one, here it is right here. And I've done a few changes where I flip the papers around to soften up the look and 
I wasn't sold on the green, but I'm glad that I kept pushing through and these photos look amazing on these pages and I hope you agree. This little face here is so cute. I love this pattern right here. I did use some of my acrylic flowers. The add of the three-dimensional dye flower here is really, really great. And here you've got the same thing. I did add the little sticker here. I backed it on black cardstock just to make it stand out a little bit more. Here at the bottom, you see that I added a little bit of pink. I just used whatever was on my tool just to soften up the white. I love, again, the dimensional flower and this one here that's a little unexpected. I did move a few things around to accommodate for my journaling and my photos. But other than that, I think that I can say I have embraced the green and I'm really happy I did. Let me know what you think of this layout and... Thank you for hanging out with me today. I truly appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.